Commission meeting for Thursday, March 16th, 2017. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Harlicker, will you please call the roll? Yes, uh, Commissioner Hosh. Here. Here. Commissioner Casey. Here. Commissioner Schwartz. Here. And Chair Schwartz. Here. Let the record show that Commissioner Stevenson and Stevens are not in attendance tonight. Our first order of business this evening is to adopt the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we would adopt, adopt the agenda. I'll second that. <coughs> Motion by Casey, signed by Navlock. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have to approve the minutes from our January 19th meeting. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Hosh. I will make that motion with a modification. Uh, I noticed that I had asked the applicant, Carrie Rim, during planning case 16-30 if the tractor trailers would be stored on the site and she replied that they would not be stored on the site that they don't allow um, tractor storage and that's not reflected in the meeting minutes so um, I'd like to I think well, that's important well, she for the said record. they didn't allow trailer storage trailer storage yeah trailer sorry tractor tractors the <laughs> the actual truck trailer right. the storage sorry yes trailer storage right. um, so I'd like that to be added but otherwise I think the minutes are accurate Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Hosh with uh, corrections. Uh, second by Schmolke. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Motion carries with uh, Commissioner Knobloch abstained. Our first piece of new business. Planning case 17-3, a site plan and conditional use permit for a place of worship at 10535 Foley <coughs> Boulevard. Mr. Harlicker. Uh, this uh, first application that you're uh, considering tonight is for Answer in Jesus. Uh, they are proposing uh, <coughs> a site plan and conditional use permit to construct a uh, place of worship on 105th Lane and Foley Boulevard. Um, the property is highlighted here, right at the corner. Um, just some background. Uh, this might look familiar to members of the audience and on TV and to the commission. Uh, a very similar site plan was before the commission back in November. Um, it had a larger addition to it and um, Commission recommended approval, but it did need variances. Um, the applicant went to the Board of Adjustment and Appeals, and the variance was denied. Um, so they're back um, with a revised site plan with a smaller addition um, that does not need any variances. Just uh, some additional background. Uh, the original grocery store was constructed back in 66. Um, in 2012, there was a fire. And um, they did some repairs, but never reopened. Um, the applicant is proposing a 1,991 square foot addition. It's the area here in purple. Yeah, they are proposing 31 parking spaces on here. Um, the majority of them are out along uh, 100 the uh, church and 105th Lane. Um, the small stormwater retention pond. The, uh, the grading plan again, uh, site drainage will be down to here and down to the pond. Um, there are some uh, minor engineering issues that need to be worked out. <coughs> um, the applicant needs to get a uh, permit from the Milka County Highway Department because the property is on uh, Foley Boulevard. Uh, one of their comments um, and their probably biggest concern was there used to be, an, there is currently an access out onto Foley Boulevard. Um, as part of this site plan, the uh, 
uh, access at that point will be closed. And the only access will be in and out of the 105th at this location here. Um, because of the size of the project, they'll also need a uh, permit from Coon Creek Watershed District um, that is included in the um, engineer's memo. Here's the landscape plan. Um, it complies with the landscape requirements um, with the exception that they need some additional shrubs in this buffer area here. Um, staff is going to recommend some, <coughs> excuse me, moving around some of the landscaping. Uh, for instance, there's not enough room on this little island here for two overstory trees. Uh, move that over here and then spread them out a little more evenly all along Foley Boulevard. Um, take some of the shrubs along here, uh, put them around the retention pond to give that, uh, make that a little a nicer feature. Um, as you're aware, there's a whole line, double line of evergreen trees along this east uh, property line here. Back to uh, parking and, and uh, the site plan. As you can see, the, um, the property line's got this kind of angular point here. That's needed because of the required 20-foot setback uh, from Foley Boulevard. Um, what this will do is they'll have to restripe this area of the parking lot here um, to get three parking stalls here because they need a 24-foot wide drive aisle. Then they can get another parallel spot in here, and that will uh, reduce the number of parking spaces. Uh, and um, they'll have to also reduce by two seats, uh, the seats shown in the uh, uh, sanctuary from 110 to 108. Here are the building elevations. Um, if you recall, um, on the previous plan, they had the entrance facing Coon Rapids Boulevard. Um, with a revision here in the new elevation, they moved the front entrance so it faces 105th. Um, you can see the, the stone along the base, and then the different uh, colors and um, width of the, um, the uh, siding up on here. So they get the mixture of materials. Um, the entrance is highlighted with this. Um, angular canopy over the front door. Um, this is the dumpster enclosure over in this location. This is the um, side that faces uh, Foley Boulevard. Um, um, the signage here will require uh, separate sign permits. And this is uh, the back side or the side facing uh, the west where the pine trees are. And this is the elevation facing the, um, on the south side. You can see they highlighted this area in the middle, break it up quite a bit with the uh, stone and then uh, the brick edging around it. And here is the floor plan um, with the sanctuary here and, and classrooms and office space, restrooms in the addition. Um, and there is the uh, main entrance application there. And with that, um, staff is recommending approval of the site plan and the conditional use permit with the uh, uh, 10 conditions um, in the staff report. And the uh, applicant is in the audience if you have any uh, questions of them. Is there anything the uh, applicant would like to uh Add or state? No, that sounds like it. Mr. Chair? Uh, Commissioner Casey. Mr. Herlicker, um, so from November to now, we're seeing about a thousand foot reduction in the size of the building, is that right? I think that's about right. Something like that. And and that was mostly common area, um, like a dining area. That looked yeah, they had, uh, Chair and uh, Commissioner Casey, they did, they had a separate <clears throat> kitchen area on um, the old plan, had this area here was classrooms and a kitchen, separate kitchen area, and then they had the sanctuary over here. 
Um, in this area here, it's got the sanctuary, but it also, once you take the chairs down, it can be dual purpose. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to taking out two seats, that's, they, that's really flexible. Okay, that's just done. a done deal. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Schmolke. Question, Mr. Harlicker. I'm looking again at the, um, the placement of the entrance into the parking lot. Um, we're at all concerned about kind of that tight kind of curve coming off the full of the and then having to make another immediate right turn into it. Did we ever consider maybe moving that driveway over to the other end? Um, I left that. Um, kind of to the direction of the engineer, and uh, they seem to be okay with where it's at. You get out there, there's the, the you get out, and there isn't really any obstructions at that intersection. The landscaping is set back far enough so that when you get up here, you can look back, and the sight lines are sufficient to see cars coming down the full board. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm thinking as traffic is maybe wanting to take a right on to 105th as the, as the traffic is letting out of the, um, sanctuary to or the church to take a left hand turn there it's just seems awfully tight there um, for cars to be exiting onto 105th while cars are turning right onto 105th or even left onto 105th so you think that's okay it's enough distance there I mean it's just a picture to me so again I left really that left that up to the engineering department okay. um, you know we can ask them to take a second look at it okay. and see if they're um, if they are really okay with that, or if right. they, they think it should be moved further down away from the intersection. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chair Schwartz, Mr. Nablock. I just have a, a small, uh, short question in regards to signage. The only signage is what's on the building. There's no separate signage. Correct, there's uh, Commissioner not allowed to come propose at this time. Okay. That doesn't mean they can't come in at some point and request uh, a ground sign. They'd have to meet the setback requirements, which is 10 feet from the property lines, and um, the size requirements, which I think it's 100 square feet. Okay. But, uh, they they can certainly um, apply for a sign permit at date. Commission, any other questions for Mr. Harlicker? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Casey. Mr. Harlicker, did you say that there, there's separate sign permits needed, though, you, in your lead up here? Yeah, Commissioner Casey. For the um, ones on the building? Yeah, signs are never approved at the time of site plan. Oh, um, they do require separate permits for like a, a monument sign or a ground sign, as well as any uh, <coughs> wall signs. Okay. Thank you. And I have a couple questions for the applicant. Uh, they, you have no. I'll wait till you get to the microphone. Vasily uh, Skorik, I'm the best of the district. All right, thank you. Uh, questions number one is uh, the landscape plan requires additional shrubbery and relocation of some of the existing shrubs that you have. You have no problem meeting that condition? All right, then the uh, next question I have is on the loss of the uh, five parking stalls in front, converting it to one parking stall and subsequent loss of two seats in the sanctuary. Do you have any problems? Say, say that again? At the uh, southwest uh, corner of, the, of the, your lot, 
because of the uh, drive aisle, as Mr. Harlicker showed in the drawing, uh, it's being recommended or noted that you would be losing five parking stalls, spots and converting it to uh, one parallel parking spot, which necessitates the loss of two seats in the sanctuary. So we'll be losing four spots. Yeah, it'll be 27. 27. Yeah. This is my dream, sir. Вообще мы, конечно, боремся за каждую парковку. We're in, in reality we're fighting for every parking spot. И поэтому, если было возможно как-то еще and so if there's a possibility of, of leaving one or, or even two extra parking spots, that would be awesome. When there's 300-400 spots in a parking lot, one or two spots doesn't really matter. But in our situation, we're pretty tied down. So it's what, whatever you say. But I'm sure as Mr. Hart has probably explained to you in uh, meetings with him, the code requires the 24 foot wide drive aisle, which necessitates loss of five, converting five of those spots into just one horizontal spot for a loss of four parking spots. Uh, Chair Schwartz, I think what we could do is once, before they get the striping done and they get it laid out before they put the paint down, we can go out and field verify and just see how exactly how much space is out there, um, depending on how it, you know, exactly lays out. It, it's really tight on that, like a fourth stall there. Um, uh, once, once the pavement is down and everything's checked out, they might be able to get four perpendicular spots instead of just three. Okay. But they, uh, they will have to have that 24 foot wide. Correct. Then the, uh, another uh, requirement is that the trash enclosure must be uh, Yes. Um, with the dumpster enclosure, and looking on the building <coughs> elevation, the code requires that that be a, um, a cement material, not like vinyl or wood. And the siding they have on here is, is cement siding. So I, I think that would qualify as a, a, you know, a concrete siding. If they were using vinyl siding on the church, it would have to be something uh, more sturdy than that, but I, I think um, with the fiber cement siding on the, on the church here, that would uh, work for the exterior of the uh, trash enclosure also. All right, and then my final question, I guess at this time, is do you have uh, samples of the building materials showing the colors and the materials? Uh, they do not. All right. Uh, Commissioner Smoky. So one more question back to the parking for a second. Um, will they have the an option for an overflow parking anywhere else? And I'm um, thinking more along the street, like 105th, is there, is that going to accommodate them? 
you know, on-street parking is allowed on the, on the public streets, and providing they comply with uh, street parking regulations, not block some of these driveway and sure. things like that. As to how many spots might be out there, um, probably not very many, because there's a lot of driveways on the other side of the road. Certainly. So there's one, two, three driveways on the other side. Um, so it would be probably worth about too many cars over there. Okay. And then you got so, the seasonal limitations too in the winter. Right. It's with snow falling. So it might offer That's why we try to require so. all the seating to be accommodated on site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else the applicant would like to add at this time? All right, thank you. You can have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do need to have a public hearing on this matter. So at this time, I will open a public hearing in planning case 17-3, site plan and conditional use permit for a place of worship at 10535 Foley Boulevard. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak to this matter. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. <coughs> Commission, your thoughts? Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Hosh. Um, when this case originally came, when this building originally came before us, I was one of the ones who wanted to, to see it move forward, and so I'm glad that the applicant was able to modify things and, and you know, make a, a good effort to try to, to fill the site that has been sitting vacant for so long. I think it's a, it's a good use on that, that pretty busy public street, and um, I am in favor of moving this forward. Anyone else have any comments? Anyone wishing to make a motion? Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Schmolke. I will make the motion in planning case 16-25 to uh, recommend the planning commissioner or to approve the request with the following list of the conditions as cited. <coughs> I do want to um, kind of stress that it is a lengthy list and want to make sure the applicant um, fully understands what is being asked. Um, but I think it is too. It's a, it's a good use of the land. I'm excited to see something develop there. Um, and just wish you the best of luck. Second. Motion by Smokey, second by Hosh. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a decision by the Planning Commission and can be appealed to the City Council if someone so chooses. Otherwise, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our second case under new business is planning case 17-2, a lot split at 10437 J Street. Tom Stanick. Mr. Harlicker. Yes, uh, Commission Chair. Um, what's being proposed is a uh, lot split of this parcel here. It's just um, north of Kunathis Boulevard. And uh, 100,000 on J Street properties right here. Um, the applicant is proposing to take a 0.44 acre parcel and subdivide it into two lots. Um, there's an existing residence on parcel A um, right here. There's also three existing storage sheds um, kind of property. Two on parcel A, uh, one on parcel B. The, uh, the approving uh, approval of this last split um, would also necessitate or be re require uh, that three variances be granted as part of the approval process. One is to the variance of the lot depth requirement. Um, the lots are just under 130 feet deep. Um, lot width requirements. Um, lots are 75 feet. Uh, the code requires 80. Uh, minimum lot depth is 135. And then lot area, uh, 
minimum lot size is 10,800 square feet. Um, these lots are both about 9,600 square feet. Um, we're really working in within the uh, uh, parameters of a subdivision that was approved uh, in, in 1923. Um, this is platted into 25 foot lots, and a builder could come in and purchase as many lots as, as they need. That they need. Um, there's really a mix of lot sizes in this area. Um, if you look, there are, are 13 lots in this area that are, are 75 feet wide. Um, there are 13 lots that are less than 10,800 square feet. And there's the same number of lots um, with the lot depth. Or most of them are about 130 feet deep. Um, back in a 2014, the um, city did approve uh, a lot split of the property adjacent to this on the south. Um, that uh, lot split also required variances to lot width, depth, and area. Now, there's uh, sewer and water is available uh, to both these parcels. Um, it goes down J Street. And uh, park dedication, um, park dedication was not paid when the original plot came through. Uh, so park dedication, the amount of uh, $2,000 to lot or 4,000 total um, will be due um, prior to releasing the last of the recording. Um, city engineer did uh, review the application and did not have any significant comments. Um, one of the other conditions of uh, staff's recommendation of approval is that the um, sheds either be removed, in this case here it has to be moved from the property, or in this case here um, they need to be moved so they meet the setback requirements. Um, they currently do not. After speaking with the applicant uh, a couple days ago, um, he stated that all three of the sheds are going to be removed. Um, so that condition will, will be met. Um, with that, um, staff is recommending that the uh, Planning Commission recommend approval of the lot split, as well as recommending approval of the variances to lot width, depth, and lot area. Um, with the uh, four conditions outlined in the staff report. And Mr. Harlicker, these variances, are they decided by us or do they also go to the uh, other board? Yeah, they will also go to the council. No, They'll have not, to make the, not the council. on the lot split the, as well as the uh, variances. Board of Adjustment. The Board of Adjustment and Appeal, no. they don't do these variances? No, they do not. They're approved as part of the subdivision process. All right. Commission, any questions for Mr. Harlicker? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Casey. Um, I don't have really a question, but it seems to me that regarding this little subdivision, that variances are the rule of law. <laughs> it happens more than it doesn't. And so I don't see much to, that we're deviating from very much of kind of the law of the land in that area. Yeah. Variances are granted as rule of thumb. And I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I guess I'd be inclined to, to go with the lot split. They seem pretty uh, expansive in that area. Anyone else? Is the... Applicant or uh, petitioner present? Anything you wish to add? If so, uh, please come up to the, please come up to the microphone. Give your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Tom Stanek, and I'm at 3943 191st Avenue in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a it's a nice fit. There's two uh, brand new homes directly adjacent to this home that were approved. Um, I bought the property. Uh, it was in need of repair, and we have done the repairs. We put a uh, new rough siding windows. Uh, we're taking down the sheds, just making it a nice fit for the neighborhood. 
and a nice new split entry home would be a really nice fit for the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Welcome. All right, we do need a public hearing on this matter. So at this time I will open a public hearing in plan case 17-2, lot split at 10437 J Street. Anyone wishing to speak to this, please come up to the microphone. Give your name and address, please. Uh, named Grant Warning. I live at 10440 Ibis Street, uh, just right to the back of this house, that, or the proposed house, I guess. Um, my questions would be, like, how far back on the property line um, or how far back would the house go and like the trees like that because that's like what gives my whole yard shade so I was just kind of wondering about that and you know that kind of stuff I, I, I don't know I've never really done this before so well, there, there are setbacks listed by code as to how close to the back line a, bu a building can be okay. structure can be built Chair Schwartz um, the rear setback on this is 35 feet so any any house would have to be set back. This is probably about 35 feet where that new house went in here. Okay. So pretty close to in line with the house that's back. That's there now. Okay. Um, Trying to see if I have any more questions or. <clears throat> I mean, ge generally, when 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 people build houses, they put them up as close to the street as they can. Yeah. Because they like the backyard. Yep, I just don't want the house, considering it's going to be a split level like the other two, being, I mean, that's where my patio is, everything mm -hmm. being straight, look down, and, you know, I know they have about, probably about 10, 15 trees in there that they'd probably be bringing down, too, which would be the whole shade from my yard, which would then open up a view to an apartment building that I don't really want to see. I mean, that's, that's my mm -hmm. point on it, I guess. Well, there's nothing that we can do about yep. trees on that property. They have yep. a right to... Uh, yep. I, I understand. Make that, use yeah. of of their property. So. Yep. So, I don't know, I just, I just kind of coming to see what this is all about, sort of. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything? Would like to speak. Last chance for public hearing on this matter. Close the public hearing. Commission, your thoughts. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Hosh. In planning case 17-2, I move that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the proposed lot split and the variances to minimum lot width, depth, and area requirements with the three, four, sorry, four uh, written conditions in our packet. Second. Motion by Hosh, second by Casey. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission to the City Council and will be heard by the City Council at their April 4th meeting. Good luck. All right, our third case under new business. Planning case 17-1, a lot split at 10334 Mississippi Boulevard, Parent Custom Homes. Mr. Harlinger. Yes, uh, Commissioner and um, Chair, the applicant is proposing to uh, split a uh, 112,000 square foot lot into two parcels. <coughs> the property is on Mississippi Boulevard um, at Crocus Street. Um, it's this parcel right here. Um, what they're proposing is to take the lot and really just split it in two. Um, each lot will be 100 feet wide and over 500 feet deep, typical of the other um, lots along the river. Um, parcel A is 55,000 square feet and parcel B is uh, 57,000 square feet. Um, so they're well over the 15,000 square foot uh, minimum lot size. Um, the existing house um, that's located right in here. Uh, will be demolished and um, they'll be utilizing the existing driveway here and um, 
there'll be a driveway coming into service. Uh, also parcel B, <coughs> excuse me. Um, like the uh, previous lot split, when these lots were originally um, created, uh, park dedication was not paid. So the park dedication in the amounts of uh, $2,000 per lot will be due for a total of $4,000. Uh, engineering comments are addressed. Um, the uh, proposed um, house locations do meet the um, setback requirements from the ordinary high water, which is 100 feet and 40 feet from the top of the bluff. Um, that's why they're angled and set back where they are. Um, when the buildings come in for their uh, building permits, um, they'll have more detailed survey information so we can verify um, where the grading and um, houses are going to be located so they uh, do comply with setback requirements. Um, construction along the river and any grading along the river that's done in connection with those building permits do require a permit from Coon Creek Watershed District. Um, so they'll also be looking at the, um, the drainage grading and uh, stormwater management for each of these two lots. Um, with that, um, staff is recommending that the uh, Planning Commission recommend uh, approval of the proposed lot split. And uh, with this one, there are no variances as part of the uh, uh, recommendation. And Commission, any questions for Mr. Harlequin? Mr. Chair? Commissioner Casey. Um, Mr. Harlequin, on one of these drawings, I guess this pretty straightforward one of parcel A and B, at the very bottom of that miscellaneous notes, it talks about the city of Elk River. That's an error. It was noted in the engineering oh, comments. Okay. Too. Yep. Okay. I thought maybe it was. They probably have a template that they used to go or change it from whatever city ago. they're working on. It got missed. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? All right, we do. Is the uh, applicant in the audience? He wasn't able to make it tonight. All right. Open a public hearing on planning case 17-1, a lot split at 10334 Mississippi Boulevard. Anyone wishing to speak on this matter? Please come up to the microphone, give your name and address, please. Hi. I'm... Uh, Robert Fruland. Uh, I live at 10335 Mississippi Boulevard, which is right across the Sweet Street from there. So I'm just here to just find out what was going on. Uh, the one thing I kind of was kind of curious on is you're going to be using the existing driveway. Where's the other driveway going to be? My eyesight isn't that good from the. Um, Chair Schwartz and Commission. Um, they do show a temporary access, construction access here. Um, whether that's where the exact location of the driveway will be located, um, we're not, not sure. It would make sense if you're going to do all that work for a construction entrance. You've got it halfway built for the, um, for the curb cut and the entrance for the driveway. So um, it's, it's quite possible that will be right there. Right, right, <coughs> right in the middle of yeah. the split. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Otherwise, it's you know good neighborhood, and it looks like it's consistent with the other properties along the uh, Mississippi. I uh, used Mrs. to live. Kate, she she lived mm -hmm. two houses down. I from lived me. right <laughs> in that area too, and I always thought this property looked like a park, really, because you couldn't see a lot of the house. And well, it, when it really the, was uh, expansive. Suck uh, ex mm -hmm. existing owners. Right. Uh, when, when we first moved there, and they moved there about the same time, we couldn't even see their house. And then through all the tree removals and stuff, yeah. uh, uh, it opened up. It is opened up. I, I think all the houses along there opened up a little bit uh, with some of the trees going down. And, and, but that's a nice place, and uh, yeah. and I I like to take time to comment on uh, uh, Forest Lake that, that did the redid the Mississippi Boulevard. Uh, this last year, they did a great job, and they really 
uh, coordinated with all the residents as far as what they did when they reconstructed the street there. Good. So, Good. Uh, my hat's off to them. Good PR for the city then. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had, but I was just curious uh, uh, what was going on and it would be interesting to see what kind of buildings they uh, put, put up back there. So that's all I have. All right, thank, thank you very out. much. Anyone else wish to speak at the public hearing? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schmolke. In planning case 17-1, I recommend approval of the proposed lot split uh, with the following conditions. Compliance with the Title 11 land development regulations, the necessary Coon Creek watershed district permits be obtained prior to releasing building permits. The existing house and garage be demolished prior to releasing the lot split for recording. All engineering comments be addressed and the park dedication in the amount of $4,000, which represents $2,000 per lot, be paid prior to releasing the lot split for recording. Second. Motion by Smokey, second by Hosh. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission and with decision by the City Council at their April 4th meeting. Mr. Harlick, or anything else under other business? Um, not at this point. Um, we've got a uh, four items on next month's agenda. Um, one is a ordinance amendment for accessory structures and um, a couple other uh, smaller projects. But that'll be an interesting one that's been um, discussed by the council at a workshop. And uh, they're looking at modifying uh, the allowable square footage for accessory structures. So uh, that'll be something the commission can sink their teeth into. All right. And commission, anybody have anything they'd like to uh, bring up under other business? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Casey. Mr. Harlicker, I had a question about what what is going inside the um, the building there. I see con construction dumpsters and whatnot along Hanson, just um, south of Northdale there, where that Horizon Daycare, I think that's the only only business sitting there. It used to be a gas station oh, yes. and a convenience uh, store. What, Commissioner what? Casey. The daycare is taking over the whole building. Oh, I see. So they're doing some interior remodeling, and okay. daycare will, will utilize the whole whole building. Oh, thank you. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by Hosh, second by Knobloch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>